everybody and welcome back to more political chatter. In this video we will be talking about the Republican debate that is set to take place in just under five hours from the time of this recording. This video is probably um, a bit late but better late than never, right? So the Republican Party of course is holding its first primary debate. This will be very historic. There will be Right now, it's looking like seven candidates, possibly eight candidates, though. It is very interesting, and we really have never, it's not, it isn't being said enough that we have never seen a primary debate like this, the system. I mean, the system of who's in, who's out, who's qualified, who has not qualified. We've never seen anything like it. It's very interesting. So, this is a video about what we can expect to see in this debate and really what's going on with all, with the debate, and who's in it, and who's not. So, um, looking at the lineup, Fox News did release this lineup uh, yesterday of, you know, where the candidates will be positioned. There are eight candidates on the stage, with Ron DeSantis and Vivek Ramaswamy being in the center, the two highest polling candidates um, who agreed to debate. Then we have Mike Pence um, in third, Nikki Haley in fourth, Chris Christie in fifth, Tim Scott in sixth, Ace Hutchinson in seventh, and Doug Burgum in eighth. Now, of course, you might be wondering um, about the absence of someone, of course, that being Donald Trump. Well, you're probably not wondering because everyone knows he has um, said that he will not be debating, and instead he is um, in an, he is participating in an interview with in a one-on-one -on -one interview with Tucker Carlson who is no longer on Fox News, you know, a big blow to Fox News. Of course, for viewership, all that, Donald Trump brings a lot more action to the table. A lot of people will view this for Donald Trump, but it does make sense for Donald Trump not, or, you know, want to not debate, obviously, because he is just so far ahead of everyone else. You know, we are seeing him at 55 to 60 percent, while you know, Ron DeSantis is at, like, 15%. Sometimes Ramaswamy pulls ahead of him, um, you know, in some polls. So it's um, definitely something that we did expect for quite a while now for Trump not to participate in this debate. And, you know, it's not only about, um, you know, uh, getting, you know, making a statement of I'm so far ahead, but... It's also making a statement of just, you know, hating on Fox News. Fox News, it, you know, they've really had him and Donald Trump have, er, him. Fox News and Donald Trump have really had a, um, had a, um, you know, a, a, had some tension ever since the, um, uh, 2020 election when Fox News called uh, the race for Joe Biden, especially Arizona. Remember, they called Arizona so early for Biden before CNN or uh, any other station did. So um, that uh, isn't, you know, definitely another reason why Trump would choose to skip this debate. But anyway, um, this is the lineup that they released yesterday, but this could all change because Doug Burgum, whoops, right at the end of the stage, has apparently been hospitalized. He's been rushed to the ER after um, he was playing basketball with his staff. So, I mean, you know, something so stupid to go to the ER about um, could cause the Burgum campaign to essentially end. Could, you know, cause it to come to a close here. Because candidates like Doug Burgum, like Asa Hutchinson, um, like Chris Christie, need, like Vivek Ramaswamy, definitely, and DeSantis, need, really need this debate to um, have a breakthrough moment, you know, to catch some st um, steam in this race. Catch some speed, actually. I don't know why I said steam. Um, and... That would be a huge blow to Doug Burgum if he were not to participate. 
But yeah, as it says, uncertainty. We are five hours away. And this happened, of course, it happened this morning too. It can happen like a day or two ago. But, um, but yeah, this really could end the Bergamo campaign, which would be very sad because, as I said, a lot of candidates like Doug Bergam need the debate to, um, to have a breakthrough. They just need it. Um, so, yeah, that will be very disappointing if he's gone. But there was also Larry Elder, Elder and Perry Johnson who are in this, you know, in this legal battle with the RNC now because they are saying that they did qualify for the debate and that the RNC is not letting them, um, you know, unfairly. So they are suing. So, I mean, that I made videos on both people's situations. Um, but, you know, what I'm thinking, if Bergam is not able to debate... And there is an extra spot. Will uh, both Larry Elder and Perry Johnson are in Milwaukee? Maybe this is far fetched, but what if you know last minute they let Larry Elder or Perry Johnson take that spot? That would really be something that would really shake it up. So, um, looking at all the other candidates. Ryan Binkley did not, he, you know, he um, accepted that he did not get into the debate. Pretty sad. Chris Christie, and we're going to talk about, you know, attacks, you know, alliances, stuff like that. Chris Christie is in. Doug Burgum, uncertain, um, but he may or may not be in. Ron DeSantis, center stage, he is in. Larry Elder just missed it, but he is suing the RNC, as I said. Nikki Haley um, is in it, you know, she pretty easily made it in, Will Hurd is also in disagreement, he is saying that he did make it, but it's pretty obvious that he's just lying, that, you know, he just doesn't want to, you know, make that I give up tweet, you know, that tweet, you know, yeah, I didn't make it, um, but he qualified late, but he did qualify, which is cool, Ace Hutchinson made it, Perry Johnson, oh, sad, but, I think he personally made it, but uh, RNC is saying no. Mike Pence is in it, of course. Vivek Ramaswamy is in it. Um, Tim Scott is in it, of course. Francis Suarez missed it. Donald Trump is has uh, declined to come. Um, so looking at these candidates, who do I think is going to take the most attacks? Of course, that will be Ron DeSantis. Everyone will be trying, um, you know, uh, at least of the candidates on the stage, they will all be attacking Ron DeSantis because, because they want that second plot, or that second place spot right now, that, that chance, you know, that spot where you at least have some small chance to, uh, maybe come close to beating Trump. Um, when it comes to candidates attacking Trump, that will be pretty easy since Trump is not on the stage. I mean, I don't know how much I see other people, do, like, you know, once Chris Christie attacks Trump, I don't know how much people like Nikki Haley will defend Trump. That would just be a little weird, I think. But, um, but yeah, when it comes to Trump attacks, of course, Chris Christie will be, and Asa Hutchinson will be. I don't like how they're right next to each other on the stage. Both the Trump attackers are right there. Mike Pence will... Not necessarily attack Trump, but when questioned about it, he will defend him, or he, sorry, he will defend himself, and maybe, you know, maybe say Trump was not, Trump was in the wrong, you know, when it comes to uh, the election, January 6th, all that. Um, Vivek Ramaswamy could definitely face some attacks in this debate. Nikki Haley has been, you know, on him recently about his comments about Israel, etc. And DeSantis, I mean, you know, this is not talked about a lot, but I think that we really could see a very tense situation with the two center men right in the middle of the stage, Ron DeSantis and Vivek and Vivek Ramaswamy, because, you know, DeSantis will want to defend his second place spot. He, Ramaswamy's on the rise, and he cannot let Vivek take his spot. So, you know, Ron DeSantis will definitely be on the, um, on the, not really on the offense, but even on the defense for a lot. 
or um, when attacking Vivek Ramaswamy. So that will be very interesting to see. That'd be pretty cool to see. Nikki Haley, I think, will kind of go after everyone, it seems like. Tim Scott, of course, we have Tim Scott and Doug Burgum, maybe Ace Hutchinson a little bit, with, uh, will, of course, promote their uh, optimist campaigns, you know, that the world is not dying and, you know, everything like that. So um, at least, you know, at least we'll have a little positivity uh, in this thing. But, um, but yeah, uh, depends, um, you know, candidate, as far as candidates who will, you know, not break through, do nothing, not get any attention, that's definitely going to be Mike Pence, and, uh, definitely a little bit Asa Hutchinson, um, I mean, Doug Burgum, people like Doug Burgum, I wouldn't really put Doug Burgum into that category, I think that Doug Burgum has a little, you know, especially since he's from North Dakota, an energy guy, but someone else who I really think will just not really have any breakthrough moments, will just really not really get anywhere else with her campaign is Nikki Haley. I, I just don't think that she has what it takes to be a um, big candidate in this primary, to have a major impact. And she has to do well in this debate or else, you know, or else it's over for her, really. So... That is my thoughts on this whole thing. Hopefully, Burgum is there. I mean, we don't know if he can stand or not. That's just the issue. I mean, I mean, what if he comes and he just sits in a chair? I mean, that's totally possible. But, you know, it's another historic thing to add to this debate. It's just so weird, especially with Trump um, not going. And just so many first-time things. So, anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you all next time.